Hello guys, so we are now in part 2 of our sectioning. So brace yourselves, simulan natin. So guys, sectioning is the most uh, skill-intensive part of our tissue processing. Kailangan talaga uh, the medical technologists will be trained, will be trained to do sectioning. And so makakatulong talaga sa kanyang experience when it comes to cutting tissue ribbon. So simulan natin sa microtome knife. So we're finished with the types of microtome. Now, yes, we will study the different knives, okay? So papahirapan namin kayo. Pero right now, guys, uh, uh, routinely, disposable blades nang ginagamit. Pero kasi baka tinatanong pa siya for the exam. So, we have uh, different knives depending on uh, what type of microscope you're going to use. So, pag compound microscope, so um, the thickness is about 4 micrometer. So, yung thin yung tissue ribbons. So, okay na tong concave knife, wedge knife by concave knife. So, here beside it are the length of the knives. And here, guys, focus under electron microscope. So sharper, sharper ang kailangan dito na type of knives. And it should cut thinner ribbons. So diamond edge knife. So napakita, napakita na ako ng diamond edge knife and glass knives, yes. So I attach a video on how to prepare ultra thin, ultra thin uh, tissue ribbons that are are focused under electron microscope, please pakinood, okay? We have disposable blades and safety razor blades, okay? So, dito, guys, sa uh, uh, knives natin, on the, yung tatlo, is watch out for the profiles, yan, kung anong itsura ng mga knives. So, here, may right angle, tapos pa-curve yung plain concave knife. So, plain yung sa one part, concave yung isa. So, kaya pa L. Tapos may <laughs> plain yung one side. Concave yung one side. Okay? So, these are for celloidin embedded. Less concaves are recommended for celloidin embedded tissue. Since one part lang yung concave, pang celloidin to. Okay? More concave sides are used to cut paraffin embedded section. So, pag mas maraming concave, for paraffin siya. So, yun. So, one side is flat and the other side is concave. So, depends on the user. So, pag more, less concave daw, celloid din. Pag more concave, uh, paraffin. So, for base ledge and rotary, ang more concave. Pag less concave, sliding microtome. Yeah, sliding microtomes, guys, are for celloid din pang matitikas. Next, plain wedge. So, walang concave. Ha? So, triangle. I so, silis triangle yung profile niya. So, both sides are straight. Okay? So, eventually, guys, we'll talk about wedge angle. Ito yung wedge angle. Ha? The distance between dito. Yung base ng isosceles triangle. Yan yung wedge angle. So, I'm priming you already sa <laughs> mga pag-aralan natin. So, for frozen sections, for celloidine, extremely hard. So, less concave nga, di ba? Best sa celloidin. For base ledge and sliding microtome. And by concave. Oh, so, look at the profile, okay? Concave yung dalawang sides. For cutting paraffin embedded sections. So, I think by concave, guys, is the longest. Ibalikan natin. 120 millimeter in length. Pinakamaikli ang plain concave. So next, guys, is ito, diamond edge din and glass knives. I was watching the video. Saan na panoorin nyo yung inattach ko sa homepage natin? That glass, glass knives, um, they, the histotechnicians are the one who cut this, who mix this. Kasi you have, yun, you have to be choosy on what glass, glass knife you're going to select. Yan, the, the edge should be... Uh, clean and there's no there should be no next ganyan so kailangan mong magcut ng marami para to get the perfect glass knife yeah. and glass we have diamond edge knife so kung ayaw magcut bumili ka na lang okay ng diamond edge knife i hope 
I googled how much is it. Hindi ko ginugol eh. So, ito ibang brand na naman to. So, dye to. For cutting plastic resins. For electron microscopy. So, please, I attached a video panoorin nyo, okay? And we have disposable na blades. And so, here is a, a blade dispenser. So, pag ginanon mo, parang cutter, lalabas yung blade. At ito na guys, madalas ang ginagamit natin. So, notice class, ang lipis-nipis nitong 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 blades natin. So, wala siyang wedge angle, di ba? Basically, it's flat. So, it's as thin as 2 to 4 microns, okay? It's made of stainless steel and it's highly disposable. So, at kasi guys, you have to maintain the cutting edge that it should be really thin and really sharp. Okay, so bawat cut mo, if it's time to replace it, then replace it, okay? So, nasa disposition na rin ng decision na rin ng medical technologies, I have sabihin niya, kanyari, I think this is time to replace my blade already. It's not sharp, that sharp anymore, okay? So, it's coated with platinum 6 or chromium 7 to prolong its life. And guys, for some... And guys, I think Teflon is used for cryostat. Yeah, it reduces cutting resistance and minimal friction. Teflon-coated disposable blades are for cryostat. And we have also safety razors. I cannot find an image for this. It's for calcified tissues. So, para sa mas matigas and paraffin and frozen. Okay, and 10 micrometers and above. So, here. So, class... Like it or not, angles of the knives are very important, okay? And the best uh, angle knife, the angle of knife to watch out for is this one. Ito yung best, okay? So the clearance angle ito, pag sanabi natin clearance angle, the lower bevel, bevel, lower bevel up to the vertical line. So ito... Guys, this is the clearance angle. The clearance angle is usually 15 degrees Celsius, Celsius, 15 degrees angle. And that's the best, okay? So, pang 15 degrees, tapos, that's the time that it will have contact to the specimen. So, that's the correct knife angle. Yung clearance angle mo dapat is 15 degrees Celsius. So, aside from the speed of the rotation, kung manual, yung rotary microtome mo, Aside from the speed, you also watch out for your angles, okay? So, ayun. So, dapat 15 degrees, yan yung best, okay? So, bad to, yan. So, walang angle, walang clearance angle, zero clearance angle. So, ang effect nito, guys, it will cause pressure to the specimen. Yan, magko-compress yung specimen pag walang angle, okay? There's no zero degrees, uh, clearance angle. Here, pag masyado namang malayo, mas masyado malaki yung clearance angle mo, siguro kung ito 15, so mga 30 degree angle na yung too steep knife angle, so anong mangyayari? It will cause a deform, deformed specimen. Okay? So correct angle reduces friction and preventing compression. So, madedeform ang specimen kung pangit, kung masyadong malaki ang angle. Here naman, there's too much compression. Pag there is less of a, an angle, less than 15 degrees Celsius. Okay? Take note. So, yung mga angles natin mahalaga. So, meron na tayong pag-aralan. Wedge angle. ba? Yung distance between the base. Sa base. We have clearance angle and here we have bevel angle, facet angle or cutting angle. So the bevel angle is the angle between uh, the two cutting edges. Yan. So normally dapat 27 to 32. Yan. Itong bit, ito, yung angle na form ng dalawang cutting size. Eh. That's 27 to 32 degrees. Sabi niya, smaller the bevel angle. The sharper is the knife, yeah. However, when it's less than 26 daw, there is elastic distortion. So, siguro mas marami yung parang washboard effect niya. Marami daw distortion. The width of the two makes the cutting edge, yeah. So, in millimeters naman, the distance between them is 0.1 to 0.6 millimeters. Okay, yung distance naman between them. 
Ewan ko kung gano, paano measure yun. So, anyway, sa angle tayo. So, bevel angle. So, notice dito sa disposable angle. Na, disposable blade. Guys, there's no such thing as bevel angle. ba diba? Kasi sobrang nipis nga yung distance between them eh. Just to compare, okay? So, kanina, ito yung discuss ko, diba? Yung angle of clearance or clearance angle. So, the knife and the vertical plane. So, dapat 15 degrees ang optimum angle natin, ha? So, less distortion and maximum penetration of tissue. So, ganyan dapat. Okay? So, the clearance angle technically means the lower edge or bevel of the knife and the tissue block. So, the angle of this one, the edge of the knife to the tissue block daw. Mas magandang tissue block, yung angle ng tissue block. Okay. So, yun ha. Huwag niya kalimutan. 15 degrees. So, yung bevel angle is yung angle of the cutting surfaces or the cutting edges. So, class, kung ang clearance angle, yung be lower bevel angle, tsaka yung tissue block, that's your clearance angle. Ang rake angle naman is bevel ang upper, upper bevel to the tissue block. Yan. Or yung horizontal plane. Okay, so yan yung rake angle. So, itong rake angle, so kunyari pag a natin, kung ang clearance angle, 15, ang bevel angle, 27, ang normal, sorry, <laughs> may lang compute So, 15, tapos ang normal bevel angle, 27, di ba, to 32, minus 90. So, around 48 daw ang rake angle. So, I, I didn't place a uh, typical typical uh, angle here. Kasi nga, depende sa bevel angle. But some shows na 90 degrees. Siguro ang bilang nila is sa middle ng bevel angle to this. Yan. Anyway, so yun. Wedge angle, guys, yung base ha base ng ng knife natin. Okay? So clearance angle, the lower bevel to the tissue block, rake angle, upper bevel to the tissue block. Okay? Bevel angle are the angle between the two faces of the cutting edge. Okay? Kakalimutan. Sabi niya, so ito ang ano, Ito ang besa, high rake angle, di ba, around 48, and low clearance angle, around 15, gives less compression to the tissue block and produces elastic flow type. Okay? Kalimutan. So, right, high rake angles is, are suitable for soft tissues and needs to be reduced for harder tissues. So, rake angle daw ito, ho. So, sabi niya, increase it when it is a soft tissue and reduce it for harder tissue. So, pag nireduce mo siya, lalaki yung clearance angle mo pag hard tissue. Ayan. So, yan. Too soft cutting edge must be of good quality set. Thick steel. Medyo hindi ka to get, guys. Sabi niya, too soft doesn't maintain the edge. Easily becomes dull if the cutting edge is soft. And I don't know how to test <laughs> the softness of or the hardness of the cutting edge so ito daw so it should so to test whether the cutting edge is too soft or too hard cut a paraffin wax at 2 to 4 micrometer thickness without serration so what walang ganun when examined under microscope so we have this von moles criterion so cutting edge is able so to assess our cutting edge, ayan, a cutting edge should able to reflect light, ayan, especially if it's a glass knife or a diamond knife, and it could also split the hair. So to assess the cutting edge, so you could cut a paraffin wax, so it should have without serration, or use the bone moles criterion, pati hair daw, ayan, so will split hair cran across to it without their own resistance. So, dapat makat mo siya ng maigi. 
na mabilis. So guys, yung mga old school na knife natin, yung syempre na disposable blade, you could sharpen it manually, okay? Or meron na rin automatic sharpening. So we have honing or stroking. Yan. So basically guys, this GIF, yan, they do not use the knives for microtome. However, guys, it just gives you an idea what we use when we do honing and stroping. Yan. So usually guys, honing to remove the nicks, the blemishes, yan yung mga, kasi bato yung ginagamit mo dito eh, di ba guys, sa kusina. So to remove vis visible nicks, blemishes, honing ang ginagamit kasi bato ang pinagsasharpen. For stroping guys, it's for polishing the blade, yan, for polishing. For, uh, it's just a, a quick thing that you will do to sharpen a little bit your knife. If there are no visible nicks, yan, mag-stroke ka lang, ganyan. Pero kung talagang kailangan ng matinding sharpening, yan, honing. Pero kung slight lang naman na sharpening, yan, stroping tayo. So, yan. So, honing is hard sharpening. Remove the next the blemish is the irregularity. Stroping could all, also sharpen it. Okay? Pero yung, kung baga pa, bebing sharpen lang. It polishes. Yan. Remove the burst. Hindi yung mga matitinding blemishes. Okay? So, you perform it if you would do a delicate specimen. Ganyan. So, guys, example sa kusina. If you will cut, a fish. Yan. If you want, hindi yung fish mo malamog niyan, do a quick sharpening. Yan. Quick sharpening of your knife para maganda yung pagkat mo ng fish. So, your microtome knife for honing, to sharpen it, we use stones. Okay, different types of stones. We have carborundum, Arkansas, di ba may bato sa ano, kitchen guys? Belgium yellow for manual sharpening. It's the best hone. So, pagka Arkansas, more on polishing and Belgian black vein. Yeah. So, the lubricants that we use for honing are soapy, water, and oil, and saline as well. So, soapy water na lang para safe because sabi niya, mineral oil, example of mineral oil, Johnson's baby oil, is not recommended and because it could destroy your leather for stroping. So, for stroping, we use horse leather. Yeah. So, guys, it's very important that you lubricate your horse leather with vegetable oil. Yeah. Sabi niya, apply oil on the back of the stroke. Yeah. Then, because it removes excess oil and allow to stand for 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. So, mga bato, ang ito, carburundum. Yeah. Ito ating sa kusina eh. And these are your leather, horse leather for stroking. Yan. So, guys, I uploaded a video sa canvas natin on honing and stroping para makakita kayo ng legit na honing and stroping. But, guys, ito, the GIF got the idea ito. Heel to toe. Heel to toe. Edge first. So, heel to toe. Yan. Yan yung tama. Ito, alanganin to. Yang, yang, yan. Yang, yun. Tama yun. Heel to to. Edge first. Yan. 20 to 30 strokes in each direction. Yan. And toe to heel. So, pag sabi natin heel, the heel is the part which is closest to the handle. Okay? So, sabi niya, toe muna. So, for this, yun, kuha niya eh. Toe to heel. So, anyway, I... I uploaded a video on honing and stroking. So, pakipanood. Yan. So, heel to toe. Heel to toe. Ito yung toe. Ito yung last. Natatama sa, sa carborundum natin. And turn it. Tapos, heel to toe ulit. And stroking. So, sa kusina lang ginagamit yan. Pero, guys, in this case, baka... Baka na sa board exam. So, just an idea. So, honing, H muna. Heel to toe. Okay? Stroping, toe. Stro. Toe muna. Toe muna. To heel. So, yan. And, so, this now are the steps on sectioning. So, medyo madugo to.
So first one, yan. So after embedding, guys, we need to trim, okay, the excess paraffin wax. So some trimming goes just like this. So may kumalat, nag-overflow na paraffin. So just clean it out and it's okay, okay? But some, 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 some books, some references say it's about trimming is that you need to make a trapezoid prism or a prism. Yan. Para talagang mawala yung excess paraffin to, to assist the, the microtomist. So at least pa, 2 mm paraffin should surround the tissue. Pero minsan, okay na to. Pero yun nga, some references say that dapat trapezoid. In class, so let's begin with sectioning technique. So first, so of course the section is the sectionist. <laughs> so the histotactician guy should prepare the microtome. Okay. So insert the knife in the knife holder and screw tightly. Okay. So andito yung knife. Okay. So um lock it with your blade clamp. So fix the block in the block holder and ensure and make sure that it's secure. Ayan. So nilalagay niya. So feed mechanism is adjusted until the wax block is almost touching the knife. Okay? So class, you could adjust the tissue block to go uh, further in front of you until it will touch the knife. But you have to do it slowly. Okay? Ensure that the whole surface of the block will move parallel to the knife so that the straight ribbon of section is obtained. So now, so upon insertion of the knife, so check your clearance angle. Pero most probably, oh, naka, 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 naka set na siya in 15 degrees. But you could still adjust it depending on the type of tissue block you are making. So, yan. So, here. Yan. Para sa next slide. So, nilagay niya. Yan. Nag-cut na siya agad eh. So, mukhang shortcut. So, she needs to do slowly hanggang, ano, hanggang ma umabot siya sa knife. And notice, ang kakapal nung, nung blocks pa na, ay, nung ribbon na natatanggal niya. Because, meron pang, meron pang paraffin sa harap ng tissue eh. So, you need to remove it. Next time. So guys, in placing your tissue in a in the tissue holder, may ano siya, may correct orientation rin. So in intestine, the blade passes through the mucosa last. Sa anong mucosa? Ito. Yan. So dapat pag nag-orient ka ng intestine pa ganito. So epithelium first, tapos last yung mucosa. So para it would not cause harm or damage sa mucosa. So, dap last siya natatamaan ng blade. So, kung ito yung blade, so, dapat dito muna siya. Ay, kung ito yung blade, blade passes through the mucosa last. Okay. So, this is the mucosa. So, ganito pala ang setup. Okay. Next. Skin blade passes through the epidermis last. Epidermis last. So, ito. Ganito daw yung check. Epidermis last. Okay. It is better to cervix. It's better to present a point of dense tissue to the blade rather than it is better to present a point of dense tissue to the blade rather than a straight edge. So ito, so ito guys yung mga recommended uh, orientation when where you're going to place your tissue holder your tissue in the tissue holder. Okay. So next, so make sure guys, all screws should be tightly tight to avoid faulty sectioning. So parang sa microscopy rin, di ba? Make sure everything is tight. For block trimming section, the thickness around 15 to 30 with a rough knife is taken. So guys, yun. So here in, in microtomy, guys, pwede ka nang mag mag-trim ga, gamit itong knife na to. So, ito, tinan nyo, ang, ang kakapal nung tinatanggal niya. So, yung iba, 15 microns lang, sineset up nila itong adjustment ng 15 microns or as thick as 30, depending on your expertise and confidence. So, kung ako, unti-unti lang. 
Plus the eraser, kung hindi ka expert. Next, sharp knife is used for sectioning. Reset the thickness of the gauge required. So kung natang feeling mo, mo natanggal mo na yung excess na na paraffin now, you could now start really trimming and setting it up at 5 micrometer or 4. Yan. So keep the blocks on ice to make the wax hard, which which would have become soft by frictional heat. So do making serial sections, guys, could could uh could make your tissue block hot or kailan may may friction. So you could always may okay na may katabi kang cold plate or ice. There should be a smooth continuous plastic flow of sections in the form of ribbon. Yeah. And so now once you have prepared your tissue ribbon. You could now get your forceps or your brush and place it in a flotation bath. Yeah. So the for purpose of flotation bath, guys, is to remove any crumpling and yeah, any distortion. So para mag straight yung mag straighten yung tissue ibuti na mo. So here ang layo, it's so crumpled here ang straight niya na. Yeah. So the temperature of the water bath should be 6 to 10 degrees lower than the melting point of paraffin wax or 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. Sabi niya to avoid any chance of mix up, only float out one section at a time, one tissue block at a time, okay? So ito ganito yung shape niya. Wag niyo isa may May sign naman kayo, class, na pwedeng hindi nyo pag-mix up. Pero para sure, only float one block at a time. Okay. And guys, after that is, now you could stick your, your tissue ribbons to your slide. Okay. Now you could float it out. But first, you have to place adhesives in your tissue slide okay so that to prevent washing out of the tissue section so that your tissues would really stick to your slides you need to class put adhesives okay so we have six types of adhesives that you could use so the most common one is their mayor's egg albumin it contains albumin so yung egg white we have glycerin and thymol so gly uh, time all guys is to use to kill the fungal growth and to prevent fungal growth. So this is most commonly used. So pwedeng this is a fecal to glass microscope. So pwedeng ikaw gumawa, pwedeng you could buy. Okay? So the disadvantage of albumin guys, it could retain some of the stain and gives a dirty background. Okay? And some time all resistant organisms could grow. So, thymol pala, guys, is a preservative. Yan, it kills not only fungi, bacteria. However, merong mga organisms na thymol resistant. So, they could give a stain reaction. Yan. It, could, it could cause a confusion. We also have dried albumin. So, dried albumin plus sodium chloride plus thymol. So, once the sections are dried, it is stored in 70% alcohol. So before staining, so dried albumin, you could not completely dry it up. Hindi mo siya pwedeng patayuin. It is stored at 70% alcohol. So yung parang wet saloiding. We have 1% gelatin. Sabi niya, this gelatin is added to the water bath during flotation. So gelatin plus glycerol plus phenol. Rather than applying it on the sides. Kakaiba tong 1% gelatin. We also have gelatin formaldehyde fix mixture. So slides are coated with this and allowed to dry to dry at body temperature for one hour or overnight. So matagal na to gamitin. We have poly -L lysine So it's a detergent diluted at 0 0.01 concentration for immunohistochemistry. Okay, immunohistochemistry chemistry to poly -L lysine for IHC testing for staining and ito class ap apes or aptes so use for cytologic uh, adhesion cytospin preparation sabi da it's a best adhesive available yung apes or aptes so guys once you fish 
fished it out. Yan. So there is such thing as drying it out and the paraffinization. So you have to remove the surrounding paraffin. Okay, kailangan mong tanggalin. So fishing out, so the water bath should be from lower than 10, 6 to 10 degrees Celsius orientation. Correct position of the tissue ribbon on the slide. Okay, so ayusin mo naman, okay, yung position ng tissue sa slide. So depending on the protocol of the section, guys, so you could, three, you could place three sections of tissue in one slide kung kasha, or you could only place one, okay? And class the paraffinization. So now, you will remove the paraffin completely and dry the, the tissue completely, preparing it for staining, okay? So you could use a wax oven for two hours. You could use an incubator for, at 37 degrees Celsius, a hot plate for 30 to 45 minutes, alcohol lamp or Bunsen burner, for delicate tissue, 37 degrees for 24 hours, and blower type. Yan, pwede gumamit ng blower for 20 to 30 minutes. So there are different ways to melt out, to remove your paraffin wax, or and to dry out completely your uh, tissue slide. So make sure nyo lang na may taga-catch nung nagme-melt na paraffin, okay? Or, and eventually, you could wipe it out with silane, okay? Or you could dip it in silane. And guys, ito, balikan natin itong post mordanting. So before staining, you could do this post mordanting. So it's a secondary fixation. Don't forget that every time we post mordant, guys, we use dipotassium chromate. Okay, yan yung pinaka-common na post mordanting uh, mordanting agent. So for preserving mitochondria, myelin for lipids yan to protect your uh, your biochemical uh, substances for histochemistry yan poprotektahan mo lang so secondary fixation or post chrome so other types of post mordant we have uh, mercury chloride and picric acid so guys yun na pala yun. So that's it, guys. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Study well. Bye-bye.